Amen. Time to get into the word. Amen. Amen. Everybody doing good today? Yeah. All right. That is wonderful. Had some sunshine today. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, I'm ready to go out and go fishing again. Amen. <laughs> we got to wait a little while. We got to be patient. Amen. Yeah. So we want to welcome one again. And our viewers, let's go ahead and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come, Lord. We're so thankful for your word. Lord, we think it's going to be an exciting time for us. We've got a rich impartation. Father, I acknowledge you and this is a great congregation that this is your ability and not mine. And this anointing shall be used to destroy yokes and reverses. So the glory shall be given to you untouched in Jesus' name. For the Spirit of God does rest upon you. For you know you preach this gospel to the poor. You sit me and heal the broken heart and preach the to the captives. The recovery sight to the blind. And preach the suffering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Lord God, I thank you. Place my mouth for prosperity for your people to experience radical increase in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God, praise God. So let's get our Bibles in our hand. Repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. Say, this is my word of God. It's my word of God. Say, it's the living word of God. It's the living word of God. Say, it brings life to me. It brings life to me. I can do what it says I can do. I can be what it says I can be. And I can have what it says I can have. I say, my life is better. I've down heard, spoken, and practiced this word of God. And I say, devil, you are too late because we we are believers. Amen. amen, amen. Today we will continue talking about empowered to be fruitful. This is part two, empowered to be fruitful. And that's the main thing that has to rest on our conscience, that we have been empowered to be fruitful. I want you to say, say I'm, empowered I'm empowered to be fruitful. To be fruitful. Once you know that you are empowered, then you have to recognize who has empowered you. And you know that God has empowered us to be fruitful, then nothing can hinder us from being fruitful. I think this is one of the longest series I've taught on before because every time I look at it, more revelation comes. And I think this is the way that, I think, I know this is the way God wants us to manifest um, his word in our life, that he can be glorified. Amen. Amen. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine today, you know, we kind of like work together, you know, collaborate together, trying to. You know, understand the, the, how much wealth is out here, and, and understanding you know all the challenges that a endeavor a person endeavor to trying to receive it to to go forth as a body of Christ. We have to keep on moving because we got a God. We got to glorify. Amen. Amen. Nobody's going to hear us if, if we're not being fruitful. We got to be productive. We talk about all of this. Then we got to manifest. Amen. Amen. So we're not going to look at our you know what type of job I have or my credit score. We're not going to look at none of that. We're going to look at who has empowered us. Amen. Amen. So let's travel over here to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. The book of Ephesians in chapter 3. And we're going to focus our attention here on verse 17. He says that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith that we be rooted and grounded in love. And after we rooted and grounded, you see that there's then we may or may be able to to comprehend with all saints of breath and depth and height, then add to know. But notice nothing happens until we get rooted. You see that? And, and you know the root connects to the vine, and the root empowers the vine or the branch to be fruitful, correct? If you cut that, that vine or connect that, disconnect that branch from that vine, that fruit, that um, branch can't do anything. And so once the person becomes rooted and grounded, but how do they get rooted and ground? They get rooted and grounded by faith. The first, the, not the first book, one of the priority things we have to realize is gotta be priority is that God loves us. We gotta get the love of God in our heart. And the love of God will rescue us from all of the immaturity that goes on in the world, workplace, body of Christ, at home, et cetera, et cetera. But we have to learn how to become proficient in it. I don't know about you, but there's been a lot of times I have, you know, uh, I made a lot of mistakes in love walk, you know, and if you're not walking in love, you can trip out real easy. You can make a bad mistake, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But thank God that we can pull ourselves back together and ask God to help us so that we can be rooted and grounded in love by faith. And as we rooted and grounded in love by faith, you know, Christ is dwelling in our hearts that way. That's the key thing. He's dwelling there. He's, he's the one who's calling the shots. Even when you're angry, he still tell you, don't do that. <laughs> you know, when you're being presumptuous, you say, don't, don't do that. And we have to understand, we got to allow the, the love of Christ to constrain us from not doing, it will constrain us 
and not doing the thing that we really want to do ourselves. We think we got it together and it will restrain us. And so, constrain us, thank you. And so it's important that we realize that I got these are the steps that I have to take. Because, you know, people are tired of just hearing preaching. You get good preaching anyway. You know, if you like somebody to holler, like somebody to hoop, you like the organ, you like, you know, the way a person dress, or the, I mean, you know, they got some word here. You got a lot of good preaching. But, you know, we don't want to be like politicians. We say a lot, but we don't see what we, what we say or what we promise or what we declare. You know, and so we need to understand is that let me speak in seed form, let me receive in seed form, and let me produce some things out of the seed system. I know that you and I have come to realize this, that the more we hear that word of God, the truth of it, it begins to affect our true, our belief ground. I won't call it our belief system, I call it our belief ground, and we feel something working on the inside, amen? Yeah. You heard it's like I got something working on the inside, trying to show up on the outside, and that's exactly what it is. And God is in there both to will to bring forth his good pleasure in our lives. And he's not going to let up on us, but let's have, let us enjoy that. Let us enjoy him because it's not your job that's going to make you fruitful. It's not your business that's going to make you fruitful. It's not none of those things going to make you fruitful. It's God who's going to make us fruitful in those areas as we allow him to build us there. Up, build us up there. Amen. So we see that as we become rooted and grounded, we are able to do something. We get a, a higher level of comprehension. And also we're able to know the love of Christ as past his knowledge. And I love that. Then you get filled with the fullness of God. And then now it's unto God. But one thing I love this is that once you realize how much God loves you, man, you can be fruitful and get your healing. Yeah. It passes the knowledge that the doctor said this, that, and that, and that. You got but so much of this and this, that. And get past God loves me so much. It, and you know, no matter what they declare or what they, you know, uh, analyze, whatever, God's word fills me to the point because I know how much he loves me. And once I know how much he loves me, no matter what I look at, some say, well, I desire to have that, but I don't make enough money for it, but God loves me enough that I can pass that knowledge. I don't need to have that. That credit score ain't got nothing to do with that. Amen. See, you operate on a whole new level of knowledge and understanding when you realize, realize how much God loves us. And I've noticed that God loves us so much that he didn't just put us on this earth for us to walk around until we can't walk no more. He, got, he has a sign. Amen. Yes. So I hope to get through some things tonight that's going to bring us to a, um, can I say, a breaking point. Now, one of the things we have to deal with, that's in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 20. The book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. Matthew 7 and verse 20. And in verse 20 it reads this, it says, Wherefore by their fruits shall you know them? Now, we read Sunday on this when we talk about false prophets and things to that degree, and, um, you know, you're not bear for figs, and, you know, you know, a good tree bring forth good fruit, and a, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. He's every tree that bring forth good fruit is, and bring that fruit is, that is good, it is hewn down and cast through the fire. He said, you should know them by their fruits. That's how you're going to know them. Wherefore, by their fruits, that's how you're going to know them. Amen? Amen? And so, by looking at this, we see that, you know, we can have an area in our life that we bury for fear. Or an area in our life where we bury for greed or selfishness or bury for doubt. And, and the thing about it, at least you know what's going on in your life. <laughs> Amen? You know, and, and when you pay attention to your life, then you started doing something about the, 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 the how you produce the things, right? You're so easy to get angry, so easy to walk in fear, um, doubting or intimidated, so easy. Those are those are the type of evil fruits. We're not just talking about somebody going out stealing from somebody, manipulating somebody, or et cetera, et cetera. But those are manifestations, okay? And so the great thing about it is that we can do something about the fruit that we bear. We can do something about that. And I love it when he said in the book of Luke chapter 7, and he said that you can take this tree and this tree, he said, you can, by faith, somebody say by faith. by faith. You can pluck up this tree or command to be uprooted, uprooted, and cast into the sea. He said, and it shall obey you. Let, let's look at Luke 17. Let's look at that. Let's give us a uh, greater clarity on this. 17 and verse 6. 
He says, and the Lord said, if you have fruit as a, excuse me, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. And notice something, he's still speaking in the seed form. You might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the what? By the root, and be thou planted in the seed, and it shall, he says, go do it. He says, it shall obey you. So watch now. So if I see something in my life that is a is, is an attribute, a fruit, or something that's not pleasing or that's hindering me, I know by faith I can uproot it and it shall obey me. But we gotta understand if I'm gonna do it by faith, then how does faith come? By hearing. So if I'm if I have an area of my life where I'm impatient and I need to hear the word as a mustard seed on patience. So I can pluck up that tree of impatience and cast it into the sea. But notice what I got to deal with from the root. Yeah. I just can't say, well, I'm, you know, that's just who I am. I can't give no excuses about it. I got to deal with it from the roots. Amen. And so this is the part of the Christian journey that is, um, I got to say, it's surgical, you know, and, but it's necessary. You got to practice surgery on yourself. Or have a what I call a, a spiritual DNA or some type of, of, of appraisal of yourself to see where you are and then deal with those errors in our life that are hindering us from being productive. All of us can be productive, and then we can be productive on a whole new level. You know, you can have a front yard that's, that's green and look good, but when you get close up on it, some of the green is crab grass or some type of you know, wild grass or weed, but it's still green. When you get up on it, people write, oh, that grass look good, but when they come up on it, you know what's in your yard, okay? You know what's in your yard, and you have to. You can't just throw, you know, st spray stuff on to kill it. You gotta get it up from the roots, amen? And that's, er er all of us today are dealing with have something in our life that we need to pluck up. Cause we don't pluck it up, it's gonna hinder what God wants to sow and to grow and to manifest in our lives, amen? But by faith, we don't have to stay that beautiful. If you got a lot of fear in your life, you got the fruit of fear, you don't have to stay with the fruit of fear. You can speak to that thing. Amen. How do you speak to the fruit of fear? You say, my God loves me, and I can cast my, my care on him because he cared for me. And then perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. You got to get that word as a grain of a mustard seed on the issue that you're dealing with. It's totally opposite with. And then speak that as you speak it, that it is uprooting the fruit that we don't want to be manifested in our lives, amen? amen. If you don't, if you lack comprehension or understanding of something, then we need to get the word of God, the word of God that, that guarantees us having a good understanding. Matter of fact, let's look at something. Let's go over here, if I can find it. I believe I have it in my notes here. I got so much stuff here. Um, let me see, did I write that one down? This is Isaiah. I think it's in Isaiah. Let me see what Isaiah 51. Let me find that. Oh, Paul's too long. When he talked about this, um, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding, that he might have a good understanding, a quick understanding. Can you find that for right quick? I thought I had it right here. And most likely I had it right here in front of my face. I'm just so anxious to find it that I'm overlooking it. That I always do that. Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11? 11 3. 11 3. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. But when you get quiet, you get. Why her? <laughs> okay, that's good. Isaiah 11, verse 1. He said, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. You see that? That look that, like that, that it's going to deal with some type of fruit in your life. He said, And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel, and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. And it'll make him of a quick understanding the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, he reproof after hearing of his ears. So just because he sees something, he's going to say, you know, that's, not, that's how it is, because he hears something, he's not going to say, okay, this is what I hear, because he has this understanding here. But notice, all of this, these, these attributes are mental. You see that? they mental. And so watch them now. So the word of God in seed form must affect our mentality. 
A lot of times it affects people's spirits, but they don't let it get here. And the word of God must affect our mentality. So when you hear something bad, like negativity, ooh, boy, that, that spirit of negativity can ride like a like a like a ghost. And you got to say, no, but I'm not, I'm not judging about why I'm here. Because now if I get to the, the seed of, of God's word, understanding this root process, watch this now, I'll be a quick understand I will not judge by what I hear or recruit by what I see by my eyes or you know, judge by what you see with your eyes or by what you hear with your ears, one or the other. And so I'm not held captive by bad news because bad news is out there. It is everywhere. Bad news is everywhere. And the human, watch that, the humanistic part of us will always give ear to negativity. And God knows that. He says, so the more we stay in the word of God, it, it's, it rescues us from bad news, from things that we see, things that we hear, because then we walk by faith and not by sight. And he said, be careful about how you hear. He said, but the simple will leave every word. So he showed us some things that would, that would how can I say, that would uh, protect us so we know exactly what to do with our ears and what to do with our eyes. Amen. Say amen. amen. That, this is so important because if you don't, you, you leave yourself unshielded. You're loving God in your spirit. You know he lives on the inside of him. You're leaving ourselves unshield, and we don't know, know, understand that the word of God is supposed to affect our mentality. Mm -hmm. it's supposed to affect us mentally, you know, how we act, excuse me, how we think, how we process, you know, how we judge with our eyes and how we approve with our ears. It's supposed to do all that so we won't be manipulated by what goes on in this world. And the devil is reaping havoc all over the world. He's reaping havoc, and people don't know what to listen to. They don't know what to think. They don't know, you know, they believe God one minute, next minute they don't believe God, and hallelujah, next minute, next, next after that, they, they fussing and cussing, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. So we have to understand this, that the word of God will make me a quick understanding, and I, won't, I will not judge with my eyes or ear. I will not approve those things. I have the spirit of wisdom. I have all this on me, and it's supposed to affect our minds. Anytime you need to deal with something, say, Lord, I thank you. I have a good understanding, a quick understanding, a good comprehension. I can understand this. And so I'm not going to judge myself based on, you know, my SAT scores or whatever. I'm not going to judge myself because so, such a so the teacher said I would never arrive to anything. I'm not going to judge myself on that. I'm going to judge myself based on the word of God. And the more you do that, the more you do that, that root begins to bring forth fruit through the branch. Mm -hmm. God's not leaving a strength. Okay. He's not going to leave a strength. See, it's not believers, right? Matter of fact, when you actually look at how God has set this thing up, you got heaven here, and you got the earth here, and then you got the kingdom of God that's already here, but you don't see it. Okay, it's not with observation, but it's on the inside of us. Yeah. So he is showing us, see, the seed is the invisible part, which is the word of God, that holds all that God has in store for us. But it won't manifest now that it comes through a man. Because the man and the earth is no different than God in heaven. One is tangible, one is intangible. And so we have to take that, what God has said, in seed form, receive it, and we can produce it today. It's amazing that we can hear the word of God, not get an injection, or not put the IV in our bodies, whatever, and we can actually become what the word said. That's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. You see, see, what I'm trying to say is it's his system. To manifest his glory in the earth. Because we don't, we don't need the, everything in heaven has already been manifested. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow, I hope I get there. We're going to get there, guys. Yes. Awesome. Right. So we see here in Luke 17, going back there, that we can change what type of fruit that we bear. We used to get upset at people and get angry at people, don't want to speak to them no more. And next thing you know, you can forgive them. Now you can forgive them easier. Now you can forgive them quicker because the word of forgiveness in seed form has taken root on the inside of us. Amen. And see, it wasn't your power, it was your decision. And your our decision activates God's power yeah. or either devil's power. Because yeah. nothing can happen on this planet without a human deciding. Yeah, that's so God. good. That's so good. That's and so you got to permit things to happen in your life. You got to permit it yourself. Whether heaven is going to get the glory or hell is going to get the story. Come on. Amen. All right. So what you decide depends what's going on on earth. God said this day, He said, this day I said before you, life and blessings, um, death and curses. He said, choose life. He said, I can't, I can't make the choice for you. He said, because I set it up that you can choose, you can act on your own will. He said, I can't do that, but I can give you the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
He said, choose life that you both of your seed may live. He said, choose, decide. Everything starts with a decision. You may not walk in the full fruition of it the next day, but it has taken root because the decision caused the seed to take root. Uh, the, the, the decision caused the seed to take root. It's like, you know, some people say, well, I don't know. Let me, let me think about it. Thinking about it and just dwelling on it, it's still on the surface. But once you make the decision, by God's power, boom, then it's got to take roots. And if you make the decision, it will bring forth fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody can stop us. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, I just felt, I just felt, I don't know what's on me. I just felt like I just got clothed or something. Amen. So when we see this, we understand that no matter what condition I am in, I can be transformed out of the, com the conform nation that I am in. I can change. Is that what I mean? I can look at the word of God and I can be changed from glory to glory. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's amazing. Yeah. I can look at it and receive it and be changed from glory to glory. Yeah. So if I'm not changing anything or if I haven't changed in my life, I can't put a demand on something that I'm conformed to to transform. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can't do that. So if I want people to treat me right, if I'm treating people evil, I'm conformed to what I want to what I want transform. If I want people to stop talking about me evil, when I'm talking about them evil, watch this. I can't transform what I'm conformed to. So I have to make sure that I'm no longer conformed to fear. I'm not conformed to jealousy. I'm not conformed to, you know, anxieties. I'm not conformed to the greed and doubt and if I'm not conformed to watch it. That I can transform everything around me if I'm not conformed. The reason why Jesus was able to do what he was able to do, he said, I'm not from here. <laughs> he said, I'm going to teach you how to live. I'm not, he said, I'm not conformed to this. Because you can't put a demand on something that looks just like you. But watch it now to, to change. But once, watch now, if we see ourselves like Jesus sees us, then I can place a demand, I can be transformed to that, and I can go from glory to glory by looking into that glass, beholding who I really am, because what I just did is not me, but I keep doing it, that's what I want to have. Because yeah. yeah. sin is not an issue with God, it's only an issue to our results. Amen. So that sin could be doubt and unbelief or and it hinders what type of fruit we're going to bear. So I got to look at this. Let me stop doing things that hinder who I really could be. Amen. Amen. What I really can do. And when somebody is doing something or you don't even know exactly what it is, don't, don't baptize your mind in it. Because <laughs> you're trying to... Um, Think something through and hope that God will give you an answer on it in your dreams. And you know, you can you can you can put a little dream together for yourself sometimes. You know that, right? You dwell on something so hard it's sitting in the back of your head and it comes up and the enemy can fool you, you know, make you think that there's an angel, God is showing you something. You just dwell on it so long and it begin to, you know, be active while you were asleep. Amen. So every time you have a dream, whatever, judge the dream, ask God about the dream, talk it out. Don't just say it just this because you can be tripping off a dream that doesn't even exist. You just, you know, you just had a bad day and had too much stuff bombarding, bombarding your conscience. Now, but let, let's move on here, watch this. So whatever we're dealing with in life, we can live, we can outfruit it. <laughs> we have to bear fruit beyond it. All right, we have to bear fruit beyond it. Let's go into the book of James, chapter one. The book of James, chapter one. And I'm going to tell you, and this will easy, also even change the way how you see money. And, and when you understand God has have all the money that you need for yourself, you won't even worry about money. You won't even worry. Sometimes we be, you know, giving and blessing to the point like, do you know how much you're giving? Well, if God prompts me to do so, I ain't going to worry about it. Even the areas where it looks like I may have lost some gain or lost some profit, I still put money out, but that protects me not to look at losses. You follow me? Because if you stay, if you feel that you lost twenty dollars and somebody over here needs fifty, you're not even gonna bless them with fifty because you focus on the twenty that you lost. But if I understand I can't lose anything, then the twenty that's supposed to be lost, it's not gonna affect my heart, but I can still get the fifty because I can't lose. All right, I receive that. Everything has to you have the potential to reconcile and to restore all things back into you. 
Amen. Sometimes some things need to be lost so you can focus on what's beneficial, truly beneficial for you. You get more gain out of that. One. All right, what, what scripture does it go to? James 1. James 1. Okay. I'm thinking about holding the Bible in my hand. I can um, maximize the moments here. Okay, he says that in. Mm, mm, yeah, let's go over here, James 1, verse 19. He said, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, he said, Let every man be swift to what? Now, what does swift mean? Quick. Quick. Right? But in this area, quick he means to give, I'm just giving my interpretation, but I feel this revelation that to give your most immediate attention to and watch it in consideration with it. Yeah. Not say, okay, I heard you. No, that's not swift to hear. Yeah. You know, I, said, you know, I, said, I heard you. I, yeah, you heard me, but you didn't hear me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, hearing yeah. is more than, you know, you heard something just while articulate. Hearing means, okay, it took a place in me. Okay, and I have a, a watch. My response is out of consideration of what you said. That's how you keep a conversation. It's not a conversation if it's not communion. Conversation is this: if what I'm saying back to you doesn't benefit or makes what we just said go to the next level or bring more truth out of it, then I'm not having a conversation. Because you got to have communion with conversation. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because our words were not given just only for conversation. Right. It was given for creation. Right. Amen. Come on. I'm to fall out, man. Right. So we hinder so much creation through arguments. So you can say something, and I can be in agreement with you, and I can watch and consider what you say and converse what you say, watch it now, so it sees of what you say and make it familiar what you say and we can create what we say. If I fight against you, then I hinder the law of creation. Though words were not given to us just for communication or conversation, but for creation. And God said, let there be, and it was. Amen. We believe in God for, as they say, a ministry that, you know, that they want more people to come into that ministry. And somebody said, well, ain't nobody coming. Ain't no this and that. See, what you're saying is hinder our creation. Because, yeah. Yeah. see, first of all, God don't want to bring anybody in there because God will add to the church. Mm -hmm. And he don't want to bring nobody in there that that person with the ill attitude will hinder that harvest. Mm -hmm. So he'll put a harvest on hold for some things. Because he don't want nobody to mess up the harvest. We, we got to know how to conduct ourselves. Every church needs to remember, and every church needs to know how to conduct themselves in the kingdom of God. Amen. Come on, talk to me now. And so we got to realize this, because sometimes swift growth can hinder the growth of a ministry. Mm -hmm. It can hinder that. And most of the time, the people who say that, well, why we ain't this and why we are not that are the, are the least Contributors to the vision. Giving a tithe doesn't mean that you love your ministry. Right. Holy unity together and belief together. You don't have to serve in every capacity of the church, but holding belief and communion and unity together, watch that, that causes growth in a ministry. Amen. 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 All right, watch this now. He says, we got all that off and be swift to hear. Good Lord, have <laughs> He said, and slow to speak. I know a lot of us are like, go ahead, Pastor, let me get past the slow to speak part. <laughs> he said, if you do that, you be slow to wrath. He said, for the wrath of man working not the righteousness of God, he said, wherefore lay up part all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the, the what? Engrafted. What do a grafted mean? Rooted. Planted and rooted, committed. Amen. Amen. Word, which is able to do what? Is able to do what? Say what? Save your soul, right? And I learned this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I meant to get there earlier. And then God said, son, don't be upset or get upset about mistakes that you make in life. He said, as long as you're on this planet, you have, you have need of me being your savior. That's right. When we get to heaven, we have no need of a savior. He's our king. Amen. But while we're on this earth, we will always have need of a Savior. So if you are dealing with stuff, watch it now, and you just got through it, and you don't want to deal with nothing no more, that means that you need to go ahead and go to heaven right now. <laughs> because while you're on this planet, you and I will have need of a Savior. But the, pow the powerful thing is this, I have a Savior. Job said, I know my Redeemer there. He said, you've seen all the hell I've been through. 
all the disadvantages and all the trials and tribulations. I know my Redeemer lived. Amen. The one who redeemed my soul. So don't, don't worry about anything you go through in life. We have a Savior. We have a Savior. Listen, that's good news. Yeah. I was thinking about that in the, in the kitchen today, and I did a, a what I call that thing, a e na na. I said, I need na na. Oh, I felt that thing strong. Well, I said, I have a Savior. Yeah. Amen. And it's good to know that we have Him who will save us yeah. from seen and unseen things. Thank you, Lord. Right now, he can save you while you're troubled in your mind right now, but others can't see it, and your age man is kind of, you know, blocking that a little bit, but you're dealing with some God. So I can save you out of that thought yeah. right there, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, because you're tired of thinking that because it's irritating. He said, let me save you from that. Mm -hmm. He just don't, while I lifted up the hands, it's not all the praise that we give to God, but a conscious, watch that, that answers towards God. A good conscience that is an agreement with God about doubt, shame, or unbelief. Amen. Amen. Woo, man, I tell you, y'all some rich people up here today. Yeah. He said, but be ye doers of word and not hearers only. Deceive your own self. Then you talk about, but if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. And then you talk about, he go up straightway and forget what kind of person he was. He forgot that he's not that person. He, he can be the person that he heard. If God said you healed, you can be that person that you heard. Why? Because that word that you heard comes in seed form. Mm -hmm. And the one who sowed it to you, he is the dispenser of his promise, and he's the root of his yeah. promise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's the dispenser and the root of his promise, but we have to be in agreement with what he said in order to, for it to take root. Watch this now. But the key thing is this, is that I'm going to consider and make the decision, be it unto me in the house, boom, and Mary took, and the, the sperm of the word of God, Christ, took root in her womb. You got to catch that. We can't walk away from that. But first she said, how should this thing, she said, forget all that. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to figure it. How should this thing be said, I know that a man, did she decide it? She said, forget all that. She said, I can't figure out how you're going to bring me out of that. I can't figure out how you're going to heal my body. I've been to all these doctors. They say this and say that. I got an account full of prescriptions. She said, I can't figure out all that. How we're going to walk in being there in seven yeah. figures. I can't figure all that out. But since I can't figure it out, let me just decide to be in agreement with you. And bam, it took root. And God said, I just want you, he said, I don't want you to try to figure it out. He said, I just want you to decide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. He said, choose you this day. He said, make a choice. He said, if you choose it, we can be on the same side, but if you don't choose it, we can't be on the same side. We can say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, but you got to make a choice. Yeah. I learned this, you can use what you choose. Yeah. Yeah. You can use what you choose. Yeah. And as we choose it, we can use it. And I choose to glorify God in this earth. I'm not going to let no devil or no billionaires have God's good and think they got it somewhere else. My Bible says this, that anything that is good coming down from the Father, like with 